over you that ha keeps you from seeing the truth about yourself, your circumstances. And the second one was, the Apostle Paul says, the God of this world, Satan, has blinded their eyes or their revelation to the truth of the gospel. So we can sit in church and we can read a scripture and we don't get it, we don't make, that makes sense, we don't understand it. That's because there's a, a veil over our understandings. That's the two different things I want to renounce today. If that applies to you, okay? So this is a voluntary church. We don't hit you if you don't participate. Heather won't let me. So if you think there's any cloudiness over you, we're going to renounce it in the name of Jesus. If you think there's any uh, veil over you to the truth of the gospel, you can renounce that. And you can do that. You're going to do that. And then I'm going to command those demonic forces that are enforcing that to leave. Okay? So I'm going to give you a couple seconds to do that if you want to. Yes. So Father, I detach all those here in, in the auditorium, those who are watching online, from any type of cloudiness, any type of fogginess over their brain, of, of being able to understand, being able to see, being able to see their circumstances. And second, any veil that the enemy has put over their eyes to the truth of the gospel. I detach them from those, and then every demonic spirit that has come in and enforced those, we command them to leave, to come out right now, and I cast them out and send them to the dry places, the inhabited places, and they have no more place in this body, in this sanctuary, or any of our followers on Facebook. Amen? Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. I have read scriptures dozens and dozens of times and if, if Mario could you grab the very outside door so I don't have the atomic light <coughs> on me <laughs> praise God it's working it's working cast it out send it out yeah. Amen. No, you. This is here. That was the confusion. You asked for wisdom in the Lord. That's said, right, Debbie. It's the big blue button. This is power. <laughs> That's all you had to do. Well, you know, we all need deliverance, honey. <laughs> now, see, this is a uh, hodgepodge of equipment over here that our friend in Florida Praise put together God. and then moved. <laughs> and so there's like five different things and they all have power buttons on them so <laughs> anyway hallelujah am i getting feedback i can't hear it okay well that's just the air conditioner so in in mark and we've told you the scripture jesus is about ready to ascend into heaven He's talking to the twelve, and he's going to give them. He's going to give them the big heavy revy before he leaves. Right? This is going to be the the last thing he's going to say to them. Amen. And he says, "Those who believe in me and are baptized, and that's not water baptism, that's baptized in the Holy Spirit, they'll be saved. Those who don't believe will be condemned. And these will be the signs that follow those who believe. They will cast out demons in my name." How many of you heard that teaching any time in church when you were growing up? I never heard that. Hmm. Never heard that. <clears throat> and I think about 95% of the people who go to church have never heard that teaching. Because if that was the number one thing that would be a sign of those who are saved, shouldn't we be doing it? Yeah. We never did it until six months ago. Hmm. So... Part of that is the blindness that I was talking about, that there's a veil that we can't see, right. and we just didn't get it. Amen? Anybody feeling really antsy right now? Yeah. Okay. That's all right. It's cool. 
That means the monkeys are getting all stirred up. Yeah, yeah. They don't like That's that. Right. See, the, the height of pride is when you say, I'm all right. I've been saved for 8,000 years, okay? <laughs> when I have somebody say that to me, I, I know, I just, me being the sneaker that I am, I say, what's the last thing that God talked to you about? What, what new revelation you got? Mm. And then their face takes this totally blank look because mm. they don't have any. Mm. <clears throat> I think I got saved somewhere between 8 and 12 years old. Mm. I prayed in tongues at 12. And at 40, I was smoking a crack pipe. Do you think I got some room to grow? Do you think maybe there was some revelation that I needed? Yes, yeah. Okay, so I am taking on the mantra that every day I wake up, I go, I don't know. And if I know this thing, I'm willing to expound upon that. Expound? What, is that the word? Mm -hmm. Grow? Expand. Expand. So I'm always in the mode of, show me more, Lord. Show me more. I always want to know more. So how about temptation? My gosh. Uh, I started to look. The Lord told me to go look at this, and I looked at that. And I said, "Wow, I've never heard this." But maybe you have. So it's new to me, but maybe it'll be old, old hat to you. So the word temptation. Uh, <laughs> any of you old enough to remember Flip Wilson? Oh yeah, Geraldine. Geraldine, you know. <laughs> He liked dressing as a woman. Yeah. yeah. The only problem was he liked to dress like that outside of the show also, and he had some issues. But he was always talking about you know the temptation the devil came to tempt him, right? Yeah. I mean, if you watch cartoons with an angel on one shoulder and a devil on the other, yeah. and the devil's always trying to get you to do something bad, right? Yeah. Right. Well, let's look and see what the Bible says. Amen? Amen. So the word temptation, first place I like to go, and I have a theology that I've learned from men who are way smarter than I am, that you look for first mention in the Bible of a, a subject or a topic, and that usually is the foundation that carries through. Okay? So I looked at temptation, of course, I went to the Old Testament. Well, I can figure out how to work the buttons. And there's two words in the Old Testament they use as temptation. One is a noun, one is a verb, and it means to test or to prove or to have despair. Okay, but in the context they're used, they're always saying that man tested or tempted God. What? How can we tempt God? So how could we tempt God? Well, let's look at how the word flows. So in Psalms 95, verse 8 and 7, I, this is the New King James. It says, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion, as in the day of trial in the wilderness, when your fathers tested me. And that word test is temptation. They tried me even though they saw my works. He's referring to, the psalmist David is referring to, in the wilderness, the children of Israel, the children of God, were delivered by Moses out of Egypt. They saw miracles, they saw, they saw just crazy stuff, right? Then they stripped all the wealth of Egypt, ran down to the river, crossed the river, God killed all of Pharaoh, you know, Pharaoh and all his army. Yet as they tracked into the desert, they did nothing but gripe and complain. Where's the water? Where's the food? You brought us out to the desert to die. We had it better back in Egypt. They didn't trust God. So the temptation is tied to we don't trust God. Ooh. That is the temptation. So I'm going to play it out when we go to the New Testament and look at how Satan tested Jesus. Okay, but the other big trial where there was no trust was Adam and Eve. Yeah, first one. Hmm. See, we always say they were disobedient, right? Disobedience was a byproduct of not trusting God. That's true. Yeah. Did that's you hear big. that? Oh, that's yes. big. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Say that again. Disobedience was a byproduct mm -hmm. of not trusting God. 
And so God gave him a beautiful garden. He said there was all these trees in here, all these things. Wow. He said everything you need for food. Hmm. I blew my voice out last week, and I'm good, good. trying not to have a <laughs> thank you this morning. So they had everything they needed. There was a tree of life in there that would have made him immortal. Yeah. And there was a tree of the knowledge of good or bad, or something that you would decide something was good and bad. God says, that tree is mine. I'm the only one who can judge what's good or bad. Mm -hmm. And so Satan came in and immediately said, but hey, if you eat of the tree, you could be like God. They were already like God. Yeah. yeah. They were already perfect. There was perfection. There was nothing <clears throat> wrong with them. Yeah. And so the lie came in, and they believed the lie, which means to believe the lie, they had to not trust what God said. That's right. And when they stopped trusting, they did something. So when we see somebody in some type of bad behavior, and we think, oh, they're they're being tempted, or they were tempted to go back and do something. No, no, no. That's that's you still operating in the natural realm. What did the, the Apostle Paul say about your flesh? No good thing. Blessed. He says, there's no good thing in your flesh. Mm -hmm. Nothing. So if you're in some type of bad habits, that's because you're operating in the flesh. And when you operate in the flesh, the enemy comes in and starts building strongholds. So you get up and do the very thing you don't want to do. Yeah. Mm. Yep. The Apostle Paul said that. He said, the very thing I don't want to do, I end up doing. Who will deliver me from this body of death? Body of death. Body of death. He says, only Jesus. Okay, so we've been focusing on temptation as a behavior, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which means you're putting all your focus back on Yourself. you, mm -hmm. which is tied back into the mixed message of the law right. that my relationship with God is going to be based on what I do. Right. The gospel of grace is based on what Jesus did. The covenant of Abraham was not what Abraham did but he trusted God and a byproduct of that trusting God was he followed what God asked him to do so we track it it's all about do I trust God so when I don't trust God in an area I stop operating in the spirit and I stop and we start operating in the flesh okay yes amen all righty it's incredibly warm in here now. Well, that's good. Yeah, because it was about 31 in here this morning when I came in. So we're going to go to Luke. We're going to look at what Jesus was tempted. Now, if I am now the body of Christ, and the life I live, I live in Christ, then what Christ was tempted with are the things that are natural to man. And because he overcame all his trials... That means if I'm walking in Christ, I can overcome all the temptations also. Amen. 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 Yes. Right? Okay, so but let's see what the temptations were. <laughs> so Jesus has now come out. He come out to John the Baptist, and he goes to John and says, John, you need to baptize me. John says, hey, look, cousin, you're God. I'm just the last great prophet. You know, I'm not even worthy, blah, blah, blah. And Jesus said, you need to do this. Because this is what the Father wants us to do. And so John baptized Jesus. And when Jesus came out, the Holy Spirit came upon him. So Jesus was not tempted until he was filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen. There's a clue there. Mm -hmm. There's a clue there. That's right. Yeah. Okay. So from that moment of his baptism, Jesus overflowed with the Holy Spirit. It says that Jesus had the Holy Spirit or had the anointing without measure. Right. So that means he was a man walking in the full power of God, but only exercising his power according to the leading of his father. Amen. It wasn't his will. He was always doing the will of the father. He was taken by the spirit. Oh, the spirit of God took him to be tempted. Why? Right. Because he had to overcome temptation as a man to fulfill what the first Adam screwed yes. up. Yes. Mm -hmm. So he's called the last Adam. So Jesus had to walk out and do what the first Adam was supposed to do and what the first Adam failed at. Right. He was yeah. taken by the Spirit from the Jordan into the wilderness of Judea to experience uh, 
40 days of the ordeal of testing by the accuser. Mm. He ate no food during this time and ended his 40 day fast very hungry. So now his natural body is weak. Yeah. His natural body is weak. Yes. Clues, clues, yes. little clues here. Yes. It was then that the devil said to him, you know, the devil never comes to you when you're all got it all put together. Right. Mm, yeah. right. He comes together with you when 47 things have just gone wrong. Like this morning, yeah. the plug in the back of Bob's <clears throat> keyboard, somebody actually stepped on or moved it or did something in it. Caddy Wampus, I have two brand new ones coming Tuesday. And then we couldn't figure out which power button to use. And then the people who usually do the back something came up and they had family things they were doing and so they're not here this morning and so we're like okay nothing's working nothing's working then at that point when everything's not working the enemy will try to throw something yes, in there yes, oh, yeah, yes, yes. that's when there's trying to be the big bomb yeah so 27 little annoyances and then the big bomb comes in okay oh well, yeah that's how he tries to work so jesus is now 40 days fasting he's hungry because he is a man so he started to chew his fingernails and Satan shows up to do his monkey business. Hmm. And the first thing he does, he says, if you are really the son of God, Jesus never referred to himself as the son of God. No, son of man. Until after the cross. Yeah. Because he was walking as a son of man. Yes, he was. He had to fulfill his calling on the earth as the son of man. So Satan comes along and pricks him as so you're going to do this as the son of God? Mm -hmm. And he goes, no, I'm going to do it as the son of man. Woo! For us. Okay? Yeah. That was for us. <laughs> yes. He says, if you are the son of God, command this stone to turn into a loaf of bread. So there's the first temptation. We have a lack. We have a need. And we look to the natural. Hmm. Okay, Bob and Heather and me filmed with this thing for 20 minutes this morning. And I'm standing over here and the Lord says, just turn it on, Larry. I go, hey, look, there's a power button right there. <laughs> what was I operating in? I was operating by the Spirit. Yeah. I was trying to charge my the, the phone that we're using this morning. And, and the crystal's not here this morning who does all this stuff. And so Heather runs the office and says, give me your phone. And I'm like, why? I got two phones. I got my personal phone. I got the phone that we do this with. Well, I'm charging that. And she's now frantic because she needs to get all this stuff fired up. And she was give me the phone. And there was an opportunity for me to go, <laughs> to get angry. I said, okay, here it is, dear. Let it go. See, there's always an opportunity in the middle of all the... Yes, there is. The chatter of all the little monkeys for you to get offended. Now, who's the last person I need to get offended at? God. That woman right there. Well, yeah. She's my better half. We had the most fantastic day yesterday. We were praying. We were meditating. We did jacuzzi time. We had some visions. We had words. We were like just strategizing. It was great. And now this morning, because the mic doesn't work, we're going to get a divorce. Because <laughs> that's how it happens. Most people do. Yeah. Yeah. Why are we fighting? You threw your socks on the floor and you put them in a the hamper. Like, okay. There's a lot of stuff going on. So, Satan tempts Jesus to go back to the natural. And so Jesus is going to hit him upside the head with the spiritual. Jesus replied, I will not. For it is written in the scripture, life does not come only from eating bread, but from God. Now, this is the Passion Translation, so it's probably a different, worded a little different than you used to if you do the King James or New America or something. It says, life flows from every revelation from his mouth. Amen. My life turned around when I started getting a revelation of who I was in Christ, what the Word of God says, and understanding the Word. Amen. Because I spent 40 years trying to hustle in the this realm. I was a good hustler, but I swear there were holes in my pockets with a vacuum cleaner attached to them. I would make money and it would just disappear. I swear, you know, it was just, it was crazy. Jesus. Anyway, I was living in a van down by the river in 19, uh, 1986. 
and I made $120,000 that year. And I had no money. Hmm. The people I I was a salesman, I had a crew, I had uh, all these things, I had all of the Orange County and everything, and my boss says, you know, where you live? And I go, oh, I'm at Motel Billy Bob's down here. And they're going like, do you realize how much money you made last year? And I go, I have no idea. They go, you made 120 grand. See, because it was all about Larry operating in the natural, doing the natural, and when I'm in that realm, who comes and devours my stuff? The Proverbs and yeah. the Psalms talks about that. Yeah. Yeah. The enemy comes in and just eats all your stuff. Yeah. And you go, where did it go? Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. you're operating in the natural realm. Mm, that's right. Okay? Amen. So he says, life flows from every revelation from God's mouth. Amen. Now we jump over into John uh, 6, 35, and Jesus is going to elaborate on what he said back during the, the, the trial, right? <clears throat> he says, Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that word that he used there is Zoe. Mm -hmm. Zoe means it's the very fullness of life you could possibly have. Yes. And I like to say nothing missing, nothing yes. broken. Yes. So does that come in the natural realm? No. No, no it comes from the spiritual from realm. The spirit. So when you get spiritual, spiritual truth and operate in spiritual things, it will manifest in your natural life. Where we've tried to make the natural work, and then maybe get spiritual afterwards. Okay? He says, come every day to me, and you will never be hungry. Believe in me, and you will never be thirsty. I'm living the best life I've ever had right now. I have no idea how we got here. It wasn't by my strategy or my great business sense, which I discovered was nothing. <laughs> but every day I try to get up and be led by the Spirit. What does the Lord want me to do? What is the Lord asking me to do? And there's just a constant prosperity. And there's also when dr great dry seasons come, when everything is like, you know, hey, we're going to shut your business down for three or four months. What? What am I supposed to do? He took us through it. He just kept taking us through it. <laughs> so I'm learning in those trials to walk by the Spirit and not my flesh. Amen. I used to, I used to get so weirded out. Oh my gosh! <laughs> Whoo! So Jesus is saying, "I am the bread of life." Amen. So then the devil does. He he lifts Jesus high into the sky, and in the flash showed him all the kingdoms of the world. They, uh, the translator puts a region in there, but it really says the kingdoms of the world. Now, I've told you that the word kingdom, when it says, uh, I'll, I'll get to it, I'll, I'll go back. The devil said to Jesus, all this with all his power, authority, and splendor is mine to give you. Why did Satan have the power to give Jesus authority here on the earth? Because of Adam. Because Adam screwed up and Satan was the god of this fallen world. So Jesus is going to be the vessel to bring God's authority from heaven and have it start manifesting back on the earth. Okay? So he says, all this is mine to give to whomever I wish. Just do one thing and you will have it all. Simply bow down to worship me and it will be yours. You will possess everything. Have you ever wondered how some of these goofy kids who are dumber than a box of rocks wake up one day with a song and they sing and they jump around and yeah. the next day they're worth a hundred million dollars? Yeah. Yeah. Rolling Stones. What system are they operating in? Devil. Babylon. Mm -hmm. Babylon system. Mm -hmm. If you want to go down a rabbit trail, do some research. <laughs> On these movie stars, when they get up and they start doing signs and stuff, or they're wearing certain things, or they're painting a fingernail, and you find out, because when they're in the demonic system, they have to make a declaration. True. Yeah. And so I like, you know, Katy Perry, who grew up in church, all of a sudden, you know, went from doing the, the little kitty songs to I am now a sexual temptress, and boom, just skyrocketed. And she's blatant on stuff she does. And, and you can look at all this stuff. And so that's somebody who's working in this natural system. But what is their ultimate reward at the end of the day? Damnation. 
you know, what does it say? What if I get the entire, if I conquer the entire world, but lose my soul? You know, things start prioritizing. Yeah. You know, I, I drive a really nice truck right now. It's a truck. It gets me from A to B. You know, it, it, it's, it's not and I'm like, ooh, I'm special because I have this type of truck. You know, mm -hmm. that used to be me. Hey. hey, I got rims on my truck. I, I'm now extra special. No, that's stupid <laughs> stuff. <laughs> so I don't get my identity from the natural. I mean, it, if you've been here long enough, you realize I really don't give a rat about what people think. Yeah. <laughs> I'm wearing sweatpants right now. And I don't care. And one leg shorter than the other. And I didn't discover it until I got down here to church. I'm going, why doesn't this one go all the way down? I don't care. Neither do I. Because you know what? At the end of the day, what you think of me doesn't matter. Yeah. I like you. God says, get up, say this. If they don't like you wearing your jammies to church, that's their problem. So now... He, he tempted Jesus with food or provision. Now he is tempting him with authority on the earth. And Jesus is going to answer him. Wow. Jesus rebuked him and said, Satan, get behind me, for it's written in the scriptures. Only one is worthy of uh, ador uh, adoration. adoration. Wow. Maybe I should wear my glasses. I thought it said adoption. I'm going, what the heck? <laughs> only one is worthy of adoration. Therefore, worship only the Lord your God and love him supremely. Yes. Yes. Uh, Hallelujah. Six months ago, Jesus. you know, I have this revelation. I'm 64 now. And I realize that I'm, I'm, I'm closer to the end than I am to the beginning. Mm -hmm. and, and that used to get me really weird. <laughs> I, 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 start, you know, I start thinking about okay, I, okay if I if I do anything really good, I can reach here. So I got you know thirty years there. My well, my grandparents lived almost to hundred, so I I I get I get thirty seven, and so now I'm getting all crazy. Last night, me and me and my lovely bride were doing our jacuzzi time, and I just realized that if the Lord says you're done, you accomplish something. I said I'm out of here. Yeah, me too. There was absolutely no fear of, in me yeah, from leaving here to there. God. And that had just happened recently. Praise God. Well, that's because you got Because the me. enemy would torture me at night. Yep. I would think, no beginning or no end. And you know, you, when your computer just starts going, a little yeah. circle on your computer screen, yeah. that was me. Yeah, no or, what if God comes to an end? If God comes to me, that means I come to him. What if we live for eight bazillion, bazillion, bazillion years, and then all of a sudden God says, I'm tired, I'm, I'm gone. And I would have these thoughts that would just make me, my stomach would hurt. And, and I'm going, who's, that's the enemy bringing me yeah. Doubt, thoughts. Yeah, thoughts. Yeah. He would steal my peace. Yeah, and so something has changed inside of me where I'm like, yeah, beam me up, Scotty. I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. good. Now, I do have an incredible strong desire to finish whatever it is God has Amen. called me to do. Amen. And I'm saying, you know what, Lord? 100 is a good number to me. Or I'll even take 120 if you want to show off. Hallelujah. <laughs> okay? But that's only to fill my calling, not because I want to see another canyon, go on another cruise, or buy a bigger boat, or whatever. Right. I, I don't care about that. If he gives me that stuff, that's fine, but it's not like I'm not, I'm not living to get that. Right, Amen. I just want to do what I'm supposed to do. Amen? Amen. So he hits them back with, we only worship the Lord. In Matthew 4, Jesus says, from that time Jesus began to preach. That this is after he was baptized. I'm trying to show you the kingdom thing here. We, we showed you the food thing. Now we're going to show you the kingdom thing. Jesus preached, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The word kingdom here in this scripture, and the one where Satan said, I have, uh, he showed him all the kingdoms of the world, it's the same word. It doesn't mean a physical location. It doesn't mean a physical kingdom. It means the authority to rule the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Ooh. I rebuke you in Jesus' name. Um, make sure you don't want to go back there. Um, 
So Satan had authority over the Babylon system. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But Jesus is saying, change your mind because I'm bringing God's authority to yes. the earth. Yeah, that's right. And that's what it's all about. Yeah. You can operate in world authority. You know, I was a sergeant in the Air Force. I had men. I marched in basic training. I was a squad leader. So I marched 50 guys to the chow hall. Deep, huh? Lay it, right, lay it. Lay it. We just marched. You know, I did that. There's 50 guys did whatever I told them to do. I had authority in the natural realm. Mm -hmm. I had 10 men working for me in Orange County, and, and they had probably another, there's probably maybe 100, 200 people that were under my authority. That was Babylon authority. Mm -hmm. and, and that authority, what did you do? What did you do, computer monkey? It um, so that was that was natural authority, and natural authority will always do what? It'll come back and bite you. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. So we have a choice. Am I going to operate? Quit looking at my pant leg, okay? Jeez. <laughs> Five faces are all going. Hey, hey, George, you know that left leg there is shorter than the other one. I was looking at the <laughs> So we have a contrast. Satan is offering world authority. And God says, I will bring you God authority. Amen. In a card game, four God authorities beats four Satan authorities all the time. Yes. Yes. Okay? Yes. And so when we start operating in God's authority... We see it start manifesting. Yes. Doors open. Mm -hmm. Things happen. Yes. Amen. Favor happens. And things yes. just like, okay, that's, it's weird. Amen. But it's good. So which kingdom are you going to operate in? So now the third temptation. The devil next took Jesus to Jerusalem, set him on the highest point of the temple, mm -hmm. and tempted him, saying, if you really are the Son of God, remember now he's saying Son of God again, right. jump down in front of all the people. For it is written in the scriptures, God has given his angels instructions to protect you from harm. From harm. Mm -hmm. For angels' hands will hold you up and keep you from hurting even one foot in a snare. On a stone. On a stone. Jesus mm -hmm. replied, it's also written in the scriptures, how dare you That's right. provoke the Lord your God That's or right. to test your That's right. God. How dare you. Amen. I used to drive my car when I was 16. Either I was stopped or I was driving 100 miles an hour. You were testing God. I, I, and I was testing God. I used to ditch school in high school and take my little Ford Pinto and race to Big Bear. <laughs> it had a bigger engine in it and I could beat a Porsche going up and down the hill. I would, I would wear tires out in, in weeks. Well, one day I'm coming down the hill, and I'm, I'm, I'm screeching around the corner, and the kid with me freaked out and grabbed the wheel and turned it, and turned us into a spin. Oh, my goodness. So I'm now spinning on Highway 18, and we're spinning and spinning, and I'm going, hey, we're going to die today. <laughs> and when I stopped spinning, I was now facing... The wrong way on the mountain, I slid off the back, the blacktop and through the dirt. And when I opened up my door, it was a 2,000 foot hillside that we almost, I mean, literally I was six inches from going over the side of the cliff. Oh my goodness. And I kind of said, yeah, you know, maybe this racing thing is not, not good. <laughs> <laughs> and I started developing a thing of... I'm not going to push the envelope to hurt myself or to test God. And as I've gotten older, I, that's manifested more and more of you. If somebody said, hey, you guys want to go parachute jumping? I go, mm, nope, no desire. Yeah, yeah me neither. 5,000 guys can do it, nothing happens. And then I, I jump out and the parachute goes, and I do splat on the ground. People go skiing and die. Sonny Bono. I was just thinking about him. He was skiing down a hill and he kissed a tree and he died. Yeah. 
You know, friends of ours were out running a boat around Catalina Island and got thrown out of the boat and two or three people died. And so there's, there's things that I'm going to be led by the Spirit of I don't need to do that. I don't need to do that. I don't need to test the Lord. And sometimes we do that. We're thrill seekers or we do certain things. And so I don't want to test him in, in my safety. Do I get the car? We get in the car. This is heaven. I'm going, Lord, thank you for your angel protection. Heather says, oh, Father, we thank you that there's angels ahead of us. She's way better at it than I am. There's <laughs> angels ahead of us. There's angels behind us. Amen. They're on the top and the bottom. Of the and so, you know, that's, that's our thought process is when we're going to go somewhere. Lord, we thank you that you are, that you've hedged us with a hedge of protection. Because we've done that driving down the freeway in the rain. I'm going, isn't it nice to have nice tires on the truck? And also start spinning. We was down the 210 freeway. I'm going down, going down the freeway backwards with Heather, 70 miles an hour, looking at oncoming traffic, and thought we were going to die. The truck just oozed over the side of the road or, or the center railing and rubbed up against the side and came to a stop. Good job. He's done that too many times for me, but I'm not going to go out and purposely right. do Amen. something to test right. him. Amen? Amen. Amen. Yes. So, all these temptations, we go on to verse 13, that silenced the devil's harassment for that time being. So he retreated until an opportune time. Then Jesus, armed with the Holy Spirit's power, returned to Galilee, and his fame, his fame spread throughout the region. He taught in the synagogues, and they glorified him. So his temptation was three different things. It was natural provision. And what did Jesus say? Don't worry about what you're going to eat or what you're going to wear. Right. Yeah. There's another scripture that says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things will be added to you. Amen. If I seek the authority, because I used to th seek the things and they would all run away. Mm. You know, when, they, when you see them repo your brand new Toyota four-wheel drive pickup truck when you're a young guy. Oh, snap. Because you're operating the natural realm. <laughs> so there was the natural realm of provision. Then there was, what was the second one? Earth authority, natural authority, and Power. kingdom authority. Power. And the third one is, I'm not going to test God. Right. I'm going to trust God. God says, go here, do this. I'm going to, okay. I don't always understand it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now I'm going to tell you why it's so important that we understand these things. In Luke 10, 17 and 18, now the 72 returned with joy. Now Jesus had anointed the 72 to go out and they came back. Lord, even the demons are subject to us. Why was that the first thing they said? Because no one had ever cast a demon out of anybody up until that time. So the Jewish mysticists and all those guys who used to do their little magic thing, they never got anybody healed and they never got anybody delivered. So Jesus said, I've come to destroy the works of the enemy. What have we not heard in church? We haven't heard about the demonic. We, we said we don't talk about the devil. Yeah. We're not gonna, I, I, I watched that. There was a heaviness in a church I was at. People, I just felt in the church. And so the pastor got up to the best of his ability. And they rebuked the enemy. And, and he was, you know, at the end of the service, he came to me. He says, man, the Lord just told me I really messed up. That we just gave 10 minutes of our service and recognized Satan. I says, No. You just listened to Satan because you actually got him doing what you were supposed to and you kicked his butt. Yeah. If I spend the whole service talking about the devil, I'm wrong. But if I let you know that there is a devil, he's, he's alive and well and doing stuff, and then I focus the whole rest of the service on who you are in Christ and the authority you have, I'm empowering you. I'm equipping you. Yeah. You know, I've had people come online and say, I don't like to talk about the devil. That scares me. Why would you be afraid of a circus monkey? You should be afraid of you. Come on. Yeah. 
Sometimes that we've had church service and, I, and me or Heather start to do the deliverance part, I watch people get up and walk out the door. Why? Why do you think? Yeah. They don't want to be free. Oh, they want to be free, but the monkey starts getting all riled up inside of them, and they. Too much of everybody just asked you at the beginning of service. Anybody feel a little, a little weird inside? Okay, that's that's the demonic mm -hmm. that we just started kicking things out, and they're they're like freaking out. I, I watch it all the time. Somebody comes in, I'm going, oh, thank God they're here. And then before I before I get ready to minister, they get up and walk out the they're walking out the door. Mm. Wow. I've had whole families get up and walk out the door. Wow. <clears throat> I've had people get up and go stand by the back door. Hmm. Stand inside, but they're by the back door. I'm looking at them going, why are you back by the coffee pot? <laughs> like your coffee. You don't drink coffee. <laughs> so they don't understand what they're doing because it's that thing inside of them that has had the strings That's to guide right. them for so long. Yep. 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 So the, the 70 came back and said, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. He said to them, I watched Satan fall from heaven like lightning. Now he's prophesying because this hasn't happened yet. Mm. But see, the authority has been now brought to the earth. Jesus blew on the 70, or the 72, and they were going out and they were starting to destroy Satan's they kingdom. Were. Yes, they were. Well, one of the things that happened when Jesus went to the cross. And he went down and he took captives who had been captive. He took them free. Yeah. He preached the gospel to the all old time saints. He took all authority away from Satan at that point. But when I say that, did Jesus die for everybody? Yes. yes. Is everybody saved? No. no. Why? Choice. Because they haven't put faith into it. And they haven't activated that part. So somebody gets saved, but they're still in bondage. Well, they haven't activated their authority. Or they're sick. Or they're, they're downtrodden. Their, their finances are all messed up. They, they got salvation, but they haven't then applied that authority to their health or demonic strongholds or anything else. So you can see very defeated Christians walking around. So Jesus is actually prophesying about what is going to happen. But he saw the first salvo in a war. You know, when we stormed the beaches of Normandy, the Navy sat off the coast and just bombed the bejeebies out of the coast. You know, nobody knows, none of the soldiers were on the shore yet. They just, they were doing the first salvo. Okay, and so this is what it was. The 72 represented the first salvo, the first attack of God's kingdom and God's authority on the earth. Okay, and so... Jesus is prophesying what he's going to see earlier is when Satan loses his place. When Jesus ascends and goes to heaven, he takes Adam's place. Yes, yes. And he kicks Satan out. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Amen. Jesus. In Colossians 1, 13-14, For he has rescued us and drawn us to himself from the dominion of darkness, or the King James will say, We've been translated out of the kingdom of darkness, and we've been translated into the kingdom of light. Here it's, it's, it's written, uh, he's drawn us from the dominion of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved son, in whom we have redemption because of his sacrifice, resulting in the forgiveness of our sins and the cancellation of any penalty. Mm -hmm. If Jesus took all the penalty... Why are you still listening to pastors talk about your sin? We don't know. You'll never hear me talk about sin like you're a sinner. I will talk about you're still in bondage or you're, you're walking in bad habits. Hmm. Because once you're born again, you're sealed. Yes, amen. You're in Christ. Christ is in you. That's, nothing can change that. You can't. I have people are well you can walk away from it, you have free will. No, you don't. Not after you not after you put faith in Christ. It happens. You're a new creation. You're a new creation. To unravel that, we have to take the spirit of God out. We have to go find the old Adam Satan spirit and put it back in you. We've got to dig up the old guy and resurrect him. And it's nonsense. And so it's people who have very legalistic mindset, and it's all about you and what you're doing. You and what you're doing. 
Not the way you are. It's not what you believe, which that's the right answer. <laughs> what do you believe and what are you doing from that out of that belief? And if there's areas that you still have strongholds or you still have uh, struggles in, you need to change your belief and you need to walk in authority in those areas. Yes, so you're not sinning. You're not trying to get the sin out of your life. My gosh, that is the most futile exercise yeah. in the world. Yeah. You can't do it. If I meditate on not sinning, I might as well just go do it. Yeah. Because once I start focusing on it, I put myself under the law. And that is guaranteed to bring law. What did Peter, what did the Apostle Paul say? The law came to stir up sin. So when I put myself under the law, I'm going to fail, 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 fail. Yes. And that's how you give up one day and say, screw it. And you're over in San Bernardino doing stupid stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so the monkey was thrown from heaven. He lost his place. You know, I have people come up and say, well, you know, the... The, the devil just beat me up. You know, he's the accuser of the brethren. Well, no, he's not anymore. He used to be in heaven. He used to stand on the spot that Adam was supposed to stand on. And he accused the believers or those who were following, like Abraham. They was accusing to God every day. But when Jesus rose, he took Satan and went, And then he cleaned that spot in heaven. There's a scripture somewhere that says he cleaned one spot in heaven. That's where Satan stood. And then Jesus took that place. So now Satan is on the ground. And he's accusing who? Us. You to you. He can't accuse you to the Father because he doesn't have access to the Father. So he keeps accusing you. You're a failure. You're this. You're this. And it's all these negative thoughts. Yeah. yeah. yeah same thing. Here we go. Jesus. Sometimes I look out at you guys. And I'm watching you. And I'm going. Oh, look at that. They're listening to their monkey. <laughs> you, you leave the room? You have out-of-body experiences? You need to realize that you're talking to an entity that's been dead for 6,000 years. And it is a liar. And it hates you. Yep. And it will materialize as your spirit lover. Oh, yeah. I bet then. It'll show up as your wise counselor on business deals. It'll show up on all kinds of things and it'll be talking to you. Or when you feel sad and bad, you go in your room and you're crying and that little voice is talking to you. You are talking to a disembodied spirit that died <laughs> during the flood. Answer that is Jesus calling. <laughs> so now, and that's just an actor. He had a couple of good TV programs. I like him. Yeah. But he represents Jesus. This is Jesus now. He's in heaven. He's not all beat up. He's, you still see the scars in his hands. You might see the slash on his side or whatever. But he's now in heaven as 100% man and 100% God. Amen. And where do I dwell? <coughs> in him. Yes. As he is today, so am I. Amen. So when you sit at home and you're sad and you go, man, my life sucks, everything's horrible. Right? And we've all done that. Yeah. I've had long pity parties. Yeah, this week. <laughs> Jesus is going, hey, psh, you're up here with me. Yeah. Yes, amen. And when you get that revelation... It will manifest down here. Are you talking to my grandkids? No. She's texting God. No, Bree Bree's talking to her. <laughs> Mamma, Mamma, where you at? Can we come over? So you need to get your perspective from what you can see and touch into the spiritual per yes, uh, per perception. Mm -hmm. And then it will manifest down here as yes, you amen. allow the Spirit of God to lead you. Yes, it will. Amen? Amen? Make sense? Yeah. Somebody should Amen. smile. Amen. <sighs> so where are you seated today right this moment? With Jesus. Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. For some of you who think your life sucks really bad right now. It does. This sucks. It's horrible. It hasn't turned out the way I want it. Okay? 
I'm your poster child. <laughs> okay? Because at 40, 40 years old, I was doing the, you know, looking out the window at the cops here. Can we get some more rock? Okay, my life was about as ugly and nasty as I could ever imagine it could be from where I came from. And all it took, listen to this, this is how you turn your life around. Lord, I give up doing it my way. That's all I said. And I was high as a kite when I said it. I was driving back from Pomona in my kidnapper van. <laughs> And I had that revelation that my life was so horrid that I, you know, I admitted to myself that I was a drug addict. Before then, I was just like, you know, I party too much, and you know, I got it under control. And I'm selling everything I own. Hey, do you want to buy this flashlight? I can buy another rock. And I'm going, oh my gosh, I've become the very thing I detested. But when I said, Lord, I give up doing it my way, I physically felt his presence wrap around me. I didn't have fear of death at that time. I remember in my drug state, I says, man, I could drive off the road and I'd go to heaven. Mm -hmm. He said, you know, there was a revelation that God had never left me. I had left God. Yeah. And as soon as I said that, I started the journey of getting out of that world mm -hmm. and getting clean. And, and how, long did, how long did it take to break a 10-year crack habit? 30 days. No rehab. Did I fall a couple times? Yep. You know why I fell? Because I kept meditating on it. I had a little journal. Three days without D. Four days. Of, Shh. I did D last night. Start over. <laughs> well, says, what are you doing? Perform. Throw that thing away. And when I threw that thing away, it all of a sudden I realized, hey, it's been like three months. Freedom. Woo Freedom. 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 And everything that's good in my <coughs> life happened after that point. Yes. Yes. I have struggled with writing. So I never got a job where I'd have to write a report or I had to write something. So I kept going to salesman jobs or, you know, little where I didn't have to write a report. And so I'm in church and I'm leading the adult Bible study and a young lady who was older than I am came up and tugged on my, my shirt. She was about four foot nothing. And she said, the Lord told me I'm supposed to give you this application. I looked at her and I went, another one of those crazy people who think they talked to God. Yeah. I mean, that was my first response. But then I, then I was just kind of like, oh, wow, God, God's speaking to me here. So it was an application to the county as a caseworker with the welfare department. Mm -hmm. <sighs> I can't do that. So I went down and I tested. I scored in the 95 percentile. Wow. 200 women and me. <laughs> That's temptation. Oh boy. No, it wasn't temptation. I was scared to death. <laughs> Six months later, I got a phone call and they said, well, yeah, you, you've been uh, selected and you're going to work in the Redlands office. Now, guess where the best welfare office is in the county? Redlands. Redlands. Whoa. Mm. So I got into Redlands. And I'm writing reports. I had to cheat. I had to look for other stuff. I mean, I did, but I was able to do it. And that's where I met Heather. Wow, well there. Hey. We, I was there for a year and a half, and I got fired. <laughs> Give me reports. I went out on a, on a, a disability or whatever because I had a hernia. And they thought I was going to be out for four months, and they gave all my cases away. I was out a week, and I said, I'm coming back to work. Doctor said I would never be able to lift anything more than 10 pounds. Proved him wrong. And so I came back to work and said, so we gave everything away. So they took five cases from all the workers. They gave me all their crappy cases. And then I got a review like two days later. And I failed the review. You're fired. And I went like, wow, what a setup. Yeah. The deal. And I remember that day I talked to her. We went to Smiley. Uh... Or the Kimberly Crest. And we ate a sandwich. And I'm saying goodbye to her. She's in her car. And she looks up at me. And she goes, when I have feelings. And it drove away really fast. And I went, yes. <laughs> I got that one. I got the fish. 
<laughs> but everything good in my life happened after that declaration of I give it up, do it in my way. So I got a wife. I got another job. I got fired from that one too because I didn't stop the bank robbery. Then I got another job where I was put into management. And then Heather came one day and says, the Lord says we're supposed to start a driving school. Driving school? Well, you're great at driving. It's the last thing in the world I would do. And a year later, we had a driving school. <laughs> we got a revelation of grace, and we couldn't go to any other church. And I heard it's time to start a Bible study. So we started a Bible study. It grew into a church. So here I am today with the wife. This is a, I wanted a cheerleader from Redlands. I wanted to live in a nice corner house in Redlands. Yeah. I wanted a jacuzzi and a pool. I wanted three fruitless mulberry trees in front of the house. <laughs> Why fruit? A fruitless mulberry tree. I just love them. They just yeah. put out tons of leaves. And, they grow. Yeah. and all of a sudden, I'm looking at myself and I'm going, wow, all these things that I wanted when I was 18 or 19 years old, the Lord has given to me after I said, I give up doing it. My, now, has there been struggles? Have I went back to my old ways? Absolutely, in that walk. But every day I get better and better and better and better at it. Amen? Amen. So, the question is, what are you going to talk to God about today? Is there any areas of your life that you're holding on to? That you're holding on to control? That you're holding on to pain? You're holding on to hurt? You're holding on to something? Because until you let that bad boy go, you're going to be stuck. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's do some ministry. <laughs> yeah. I'm you want to come up and play a song or play music or put soaking music on? Do You'll do the camera? All right. Can I do that on the floor? Bob wants to play the piano. Last Sunday... I walked out to everybody to minister to them, right? Yeah. Did anybody I ministered to last week, are they here today? Yeah. Was there any result of what I spoke over you? Did you see anything manifest or did anything happen or did you feel something transpire? Uh, I had the courage to ask for the anointing. Cool. Okay. So, I had a lady that was sitting right there, and she said, I have some physical, I don't even know if she's told me what, I don't think she told me what they were, but she said, I need, I need healing in my body and in something else, and so I just prayed over her, and then I'm talking to the other people, and I mentioned, and all of a sudden, she's holding her stomach, and she's going, the hernia is gone. <laughs> I didn't even pray over a hernia. I just prayed total healing and restoration over her. But she was in a mindset of, I'm getting something today. See, if, 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 I, if you ask me to pray for you and you're going, well, I, I don't know if this is going to work, it ain't. No, that's right. If, if I, you ask me to pray for you and you say, man, I'm getting it today, you're going to get it. But if there's doubt in you or you're second guessing and you're kind of like throwing spaghetti against the refrigerator... Never understood why people did that, but I think that's what you're supposed to do before you make the good spaghetti. So I'm going to ask now if anybody wants prayer for healing or deliverance. And today, I'm going to, if you want to, I'm going to make you come up because there's more power when you do that, that walk. So if anybody wants prayer for healing, come on up. And if anybody wants prayer for deliverance, we'll call you up one at a time after that, okay? <laughs> so this is going to be physical healing, okay? Hi, Jenna. How are you? I'm good. good to see you. I'm good. You're looking yeah, all chipper. I see you were here early today. <laughs> I'm taking a shot. I know. Okay. <laughs> what is it that you need? You told me I'm not supposed to say it out of my pie hole. <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so you want this, there's a something. Physical healing. Physical healing in your body. Okay. Multiple. <sighs> okay. <laughs> Let me talk to Dad for a second. That's my let's talk. As soon as you walked up and said that, the first thing I heard was stress. Mm-hmm. 
Okay. <laughs> stress is tied to worry. Mm -hmm. Okay. So worry and stress in the natural realm are horrible for your body. Mm -hmm. Okay. So think about mm -hmm. what is it that the worry is coming from? Is it coming from the physical ailment or is it coming from some, is there some other worry or concern in your life? You don't have to tell me, just if, if there is. <laughs> it's both, and I don't know which comes first. Okay. The, 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 the body part is a byproduct of the worry about something. So it's that something that you're worrying about. That's one of the things we need to nip in the bud. Mm -hmm. Okay. If it's something, if you want to renounce that, we'll do that and then we'll speak to the body. So. What is it that you, you get tied up with? Um, I renounce the worry about my aging body that I'm going to have to live with worse and worse pain instead of be prosperous and healthy. So it's the what if? Yeah. It's the what well, if? Well, it's, it's here now. Okay. But it started as the what if. I don't want to live if. like this okay. forever. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I renounce that. Okay. Loss of hope. Okay. Of you. Okay. So... <clears throat> lost hope in healing mm -hmm. or you get attacked that it's hopeless mm -hmm. and and the enemy has convinced you that this is as good as it gets and this is how you'll you'll live out the, the next 32 years yes. of your life okay yes. so you renounce that so now in the name of jesus and his authority i detach you from those things you renounced and all the spirits that have come in and attached themselves to you through those doubts and worries I now command them to come out of you in Jesus' mighty name. Every spirit of inflammation, every spirit of doubt, every lying spirit that's speaking to you, I command them now to come out of you and I cast you off to the dry places, the uninhabited places. You must come out of her right now. Every one of you. Every one of you must come out of her right now in Jesus' name. Every one of you. And as you guys are leaving her right now, I'm going to speak total restoration and healing to her body. Every part of her body where there's been inflammation, every part of her joints, her muscles, her back, even her brain, all her organs where there's been uh, inflammation and in hearing, any loss of hearing, we rebuke that spirit. We speak total wholeness over Janet right now because she has a covenant with God Almighty through Jesus Christ. And so I speak healing into her body. And all the demonic have to <coughs> vacate right now in Jesus' name. Every lying spirit that has taken up residence in Janet must leave right now. And because this is a teaching class, anything you're feeling, you want to share right now. Just feeling a little dry mouth. Dry mouth? Okay. Is that normal? No. Okay. Any anything around the throat or chest? Anything in your tummy? Yeah, I'm feeling some tension. Okay. I don't have all day. No. Every single one of you lying monkeys. That we've just renounced. At the count of three, you must all vacate Janet. We're not going to do this all day long. I have the authority, you don't. She's renounced you, she's cut the lease. So at the count of three, all of you must leave her right now. One, two, three. All of you must come out of her right now. Every single one of you must leave her right now. Leave her body. You have no legal right to take up residency in her body. And as you're leaving, I'm speaking healing and restoration to her body right now in Jesus' name. Do you know you're clenching your jaw? I've, I've read that I have to make a demand on this healing. I'm expecting it. I'm not making okay. a demand. One of the things that I have learned is the Lord told me when Heather was ministering to me, I saw three toads in my gut down here in my belly. 
The Lord says, go ahead and cough those bad boys up. <coughs> so faith without an action is no faith. And I don't want to tell you how to do it, but that is just what I did. I, so when I'm doing that, I just, I mean, I'll do something to like, you're getting out, you're going. So anything that you're led to do right now, Jenny, just you go ahead and do it. Deep breaths. <laughs> yeah, so deep breaths is fine. Sometimes I've seen it manifesting with just crying. You know, then we have the coughing, we have the spitting up. I mean, it's, it's whatever you feel comfortable with right now. Because <clears throat> we're working in tangent. We're working together. We're, we're, we're binding our faith and declaration together that those all have to leave you. Well, then don't. Okay. Just do whatever you feel led to do. I feel like I'm supposed I need to do something because you don't have all day, but I can't no, no, no. manifest anything. And you know what? We're just going to declare that you're cooking right now, okay? Yeah. So <laughs> you go back and you sit down and you okay. tell me if anything happens, okay? But you just, you just believe right now that you're free. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to have to stop meeting like this, you know. I never leave here empty again. <laughs> what is anything particular? All kinds of things. Pain in this arm, there are damage here, there are damage in my foot, there are damage in my leg, heart problems, type 2 diabetes. I got it all. Okay. Spirit of confusion. How do you know? <laughs> That's one. That's one that, that just keeps you it's a state of unrest yeah okay so in the name of Jesus I renounce I renounce the spirit of confusion the spirit of confusion and every single affliction every single affliction that's coming against my body right now in Jesus name <laughs> Steve threw me off the first time he came because he was really uh, exuberant about getting stuff off. And it, it was very easy to speak over him and things would manifest. And then, then next week they manifest. And I'm going, okay, Lord, it's like, is this just like a show every week? He goes, no, he's got a lifetime of stuff. And so the thing about Steve is he believes it and he ain't holding back. And so did I push you, Steve? No, you didn't. I just touched him. It's just like when I went down to see Catherine Crick and I asked for the anointing and you know she came up and it was like this little tiny hand was coming up and she she touched me on the head and then she stepped away. And I'm just standing there going like, okay, and all of a sudden boom and if you watch the video I take three steps back, I almost fell. <laughs> and that was like electrical current hit my yeah. head and just bleep. okay that's easy more analytical okay trying to figure it out how's this work okay it's, it's come almost childlike Daddy can I have a cookie. Here's a cookie. Okay, now if I go to Dad and I tell him I dump the trash, and you know, there's one that's just like Dad's going to give it to him. The other one is trying to figure it out. Yeah. Okay, and so it, things will manifest different ways and, and different quicknesses. Okay. Praise God. Josh, what do you need, my friend? Hmm. Thank you, Lord. Um, Thank you, Lord. I, I think um, a little bit of both, but I want to start with the deliverance first because I, I know that's the stronghold that's really warped my identity and made me do things I regret you now because I'm, 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 it's a long story but basically I'm tired of being alone you already know that I want to find a good woman but I, I got into some trouble with some stuff but I know the root cause of it is because of pornography okay. and it's really affected me my whole life I'm tired of it I don't want it in my life anymore and I'm tired of doing it on my own because I, by doing it by myself I just not only created more of a mess, but it's just too hard, you know? 
I can't do it on my own anymore. It's, 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 it's a burden and I can't live like that. Do you know? I'm trying, I have to keep myself, I gotta keep myself together here. Because <laughs> this is what we've been praying and believing for for years. Because this is a beloved son. And when you see a beloved son tormented, it breaks your heart. And, and because they don't know why they're tormented or they don't, they don't know how to figure it out. So this is very cool. So I'm going to tell you some, some things. There's a layer here, John. And the first one is rejection. Yeah. I that is your oldest root of rejection. Yeah. So you felt rejected. Now, the rejection doesn't have to be real or it can be real. But to you, it was real. Okay? Then out of that rejection, the other stuff's come on. So if I cast off pornography or, or silliness or whatever over here, they're going to come back. So the root is rejection. And how we're going to do it is I'm going to ask you to repeat after me. We're going to renounce those things. And then I will separate you from them. Okay? All right. Are you um, ready? The only thing that is that I feel like I want to do, if it's okay, is I want to get on my knees and lift my hands up. Because I felt like God was telling me to do that earlier. But I was, like, I was letting pride get in the way. I'm, I'm, I'm tired do, do whatever you feel like you need to do. Okay? Yeah, amen. 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 Lord. I'm going to hit some things that the Lord is talking to me about, Josh. I got a long relationship with this young man. Okay? So, and you're going to repeat after me. In the name okay. of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I renounce. I renounce. Rejection. Rejection. I renounce pornography. I renounce pornography. Lust. Lust. Loneliness. Loneliness. The lie that I'm alone. <laughs> the lie that I'm alone. And the lie that nothing will change. The lie that nothing will change. Okay. Now we're going to start with those, Josh, and there might be other things that we deal with later, okay? Yeah. So you've renounced them, and so now I'm going to command them to come out. And however it manifests, if, if it's a cough, if it's a tummy ache, if you fall over, whatever, okay? So in the name of Jesus, I detach Josh from those things that he has renounced. And in the power and authority of Jesus Christ, I command every one of those lying spirits to come out of Josh right now, and I cast you to the dry places, and you have no more authority and no more place in Josh's life yes. right now. So right now you have to come out. Every single one of you have to come out. He has renounced you. Every single one of you lying spirits must come out of Josh right now in Jesus' name. The, um, since, uh, I just want to say... Um, because um, I worked on this last night a lot, and then I know your word was true, not only the sermon, but I have a lot of confusion, obviously, because of what happened in the past, too. Right. So what I'm trying to get at is I don't know what the next step is, because I'm not trying to take up it all the time, you know? No, no, you're fine. But you're fine. Um, I know a lot of it is the confusion, the mistaken identities, the, the, the doubt, the fear. Okay. Um, There's another one that just came to my mind. You, you were ready to get rid of that yes, one? Yes, yes. Okay. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I renounce. I renounce the Jezebel spirit. The Je Jezebel spirit. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, I detach Josh from the Jezebel spirit, and I command that spirit to come out of him right now in Jesus' mighty name. All of you, all of you, in the same order that you came in, the Josh. You must leave him right now in Jesus' name. Come out. Every last one of you. Every last one of you. You have to come out. You have to come out. You have to come out right now. Every one of you have to come out. Josh, just, you just let him come out, okay? okay? You don't have to figure it out. Thank you. You are hotter than a firecracker right now, my friend. Ooh, I can feel the spirit a little bit. Yeah, he, so he's hot. He's, his head is on fire. <laughs> Oh, you lying spirit, Jezebel. You come out of him right now. Oh, you come out of him right now. That spirit of rejection, you come out. That familiar spirit, which is the Jezebel that came in when you were just five years old, Josh. That's the one that's fighting right now. It has to come out in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father God. Thank you for never giving up on me. Thank you, Dad. I came up in a good Christian home, and I got good people who love me. And for most of all, you love me. Every line is spirit. 
come right out of Josh right now. Every line of spirit come out of Josh right now. Every line of spirit come out of Josh right now. Every line of spirit come out of Josh. He has renounced you. You have no more authority to be in Josh, so you must leave him right now in Jesus' name. I speak over Josh right now that he has the mind of Christ. But the spirit of confusion, the spirit of doubt, the lying spirits that he's listened to his whole life must come out of him right now. And Lord, we speak clarity to his mind, clarity to his spirit, that he does not hear the familiar spirit, but he hears the spirit of God from this day forward. And he will be able to discern between the enemy and his father in heaven. So Lord, we just declare that Josh is free in his mind and in his body. In Jesus' name, amen. Josh, your little forehead is about 150 degrees, my friend. Well, okay. You guys can really do. You know, we probably have to do this some more, but you know, uh-huh. this is a big step, okay? I agree. I love you, man. Thank you okay. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. <sighs> Miss Rose. Tarakura, <laughs> Tarakura. I just feel like crying. Well, let me talk to Dad because he knows what you need. In your life, Rose, you have taken on the burden of your family. And and the reason I was able to come on you is because the rejection you felt as a little girl, the need to please, the need to perform, and so you became the matriarch for the family. And then really what happens is you start taking on the mantle of Jesus. And you, you were never meant to carry that. And so I see a residue of rejection. I see a residue of a religious spirit. I see a residue of a cloudy spirit over you and a guilt a spirit of guilt is trying to come on you so I detach Rose from all those four things that I just mentioned and I declare that she is free of them right now in Jesus name I command every one of those spirits to come out of my sister because she has a covenant and Lord I just speak joy into her Lord right now that as those demons are coming out that the joy of the Lord would fill her up and she would understand how much she is loved, how much she's accepted, and how perfect she is in God's eyes. So we thank you, Lord, for the work you're doing in Rose right now. Yes. In Jesus' name. There's no formula. I, you know, when we first started doing it, there was coughing, 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 coughing. And, and then we started seeing crying. Then we, we saw people just, um, <clears throat> we've seen it manifest. We've seen people get stomach aches. We, we, I've seen people get locked jaw. I've seen people say they feel like they're being choked. So the demonic, when they're leaving, will manifest in all different kinds of ways. So there is no set formula that we follow. And if you want to be in this ministry and walk in this anointing, a prophetic gift is super important. Because somebody comes up, like Rose just came up, and I love Rose. I've known Rose for a long time. And I know her heart wants to do the right thing and be the right thing. And and she cares about her family and she carries a burden for her family. But if... If the enemy has confused you, then you start trying to carry the burden that only Jesus could carry. And so there might be so much stuff, you don't actually know one particular thing. There's just this, still this heaviness on you. And so she just came up. Okay? Let's let the Lord minister to you right now, Rose. You're fine. I love you, sister. Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. Come on up. 
I like your hat. It's really cool. It is. I've noticed it too. Uh, I, I started this whole deliverance journey this summer. Um, I'm with okay. Catherine. She's crazy, isn't she? She's wonderful. <laughs> um, and then I actually emailed you because I'm still battling. God, the Lord delivered me from addiction to pills, alcohol. I've always had addiction. Okay. And I still have uh, addiction to nicotine gum and kratom tea. Okay. So, and it's. Your message was completely what I needed because I was so huh? focused. It's like the God, Lord knew God, I was going to show up, and he, man, it, was, it took a lot to get here this morning, but I knew that okay. something big was going to happen. Okay, an addiction is always something trying to cover up something else. Yeah. Yeah, so there's, so if, if I renounce and, and command the, the, the nicotine addiction and kind of command the addictions to come off, the owie, that you're trying to cover and, and minister to is still there. Mm -hmm. So we need to figure out what the owie is. Mm -hmm. You either know it or I got to hear it from the Lord. So if you think you know what it is, you can share it. Or I just need to hear what it is. Um, <clears throat> the rejection. Yeah, ding, ding, ding. Chicken dinner. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Because that's the first thing I heard as I stepped back from it is I heard rejection. Mm -hmm. And see, a lot of people, they try to to calculate they had rejection well you know and my mom and dad both lived in the house and you know they bought me tennis shoes and then you step back and you realize man there was an emotional detachment mm -hmm. yeah mom and dad could never say anything good mom and dad never said i love you and you know i was always scampering to try to get their attention and their approval or whatever mm -hmm. and that in that mode as a little kid the familiar spirit comes in mm -hmm. yep and it starts you know you they can never say anything you're mm -hmm. you're just a loser and all of a sudden this thing builds a stronghold in you and it's a rejection mm -hmm. rejection is the root that everything else is birthed out of mm -hmm. the jezebel can't come in unless there's a rejection mm -hmm. you know the pornography or the alcohol all that kind of stuff has to the first thing is rejection mm -hmm. yep. and there's already a little bit of rejection this is when we're born because we were rejected by god because of adam mm -hmm. So rejection is kind of already there. Mm -hmm. Then if your biological parents reject you, or a teacher rejects you, or the first boyfriend or girlfriend rejects you, bam! Yeah. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, we're going to renounce rejection and all the byproduct of that rejection. Okay? So in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus I, renounce I renounce all rejection, all rejection. and everything, and everything that came in through that door. That came in through that door. I, renounce I renounce it now, and I let it go. And I let it go. Amen. So now in the authority of Jesus, I detach you from that, because you've renounced it now. Mm -hmm. And in the authority of Jesus, I command the spirit of rejection and all its lying cousins to come out of you right now. Every one of those lying spirits must come out of you right now, because you have no more authority. So much you must vacate now. Right now. You must come out of it right now. Because we're teaching. Do you feel anything? Just, uh, it feels like energy in my chest. Okay. That's them going, no, I don't want to come out. Okay. So they don't have any authority to stay. Mm -hmm. And so every one of you must come out of her right now. In Jesus' name. Right now. In Jesus' name. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because I can co-minister. Come here, Heather. Okay. <clears throat> I want you to just command those spirits to come out of her. Right now. So I heard the Lord say. Come, come over here. Mm -hmm. I speak to every spirit that's been operating in you from the time you were a child. Every spirit of rejection that's lied to you, that's taken you captive. There we go. Get out of her now. Praise the Lord. Leave this daughter of God now. Out. All of you, out. At the count of three. We're leaving again. One, two, three. Out. Now. Come out. Out of her. <coughs> Every spirit that said you weren't worth loving. Mm. Mm. Out of mm. her now. Jesus' name. 
out of her now in Jesus' name. Every spirit of orphan and abandonment, I command to leave you now in Jesus' name. Out. Out of her now. Leave. Up and out of her now in Jesus' name. They're leaving you now. Yeah. They're leaving you now. They're leaving you now. Every single one is coming up out. Yeah. <coughs> Hallelujah. They're coming up out of you. They can't stay in Because God loves you so much. Your father gave you an identity before you ever lived one day. He said, your love and your acceptance. And the enemy came in. Those spirits of rejection and lie and abandonment and orphan, that is who they are. That's not who you are. And they attach themselves to people. They've attached themselves to you. And they try to make you think that's who you are. But that's not who you are. That is not who you are. That is not who you are. And every spirit of addiction attached to rejection, I command to leave you now in the name of Jesus. You renounce the addiction to nicotine gum. I break its power over you right now. At the count of three, it can no longer operate in you anymore. It no longer leads you around by a choke chain. Spirit of addiction to nicotine gum in Jesus' name, come out of her now. Out from this day forward. Out. every spirit of self-hatred, the lies of self-hatred, and unworthiness must go now in the name of Jesus. I command them to leave now in Jesus' name. At the count of three, every single one's coming out. One, two, three. Out in Jesus' name. God's freed you. God's freed you. God's freed you from that demonic stronghold, from those things that were inside of you. And in the name of Jesus, I just speak the anointing of God over you and the fire of God to fill you. Hallelujah. Fill her, fill her, fill her, Lord, to overflowing. Fill her to overflowing right now in Jesus' name. Fill her to overflowing in Jesus' name right now. Hallelujah. Continue the work that you've started. Burning out every single lie and every single infection of the enemy that has harmed her and hurt her and lied to her in Jesus' name. Be completely free now. Be completely free right now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise like God. That? Yeah, hallelujah. You like that handoff? Glory to God. Deb Kirby, bring her up where she can come down right here, dear. She can come right here. Hallelujah. Why did I do that? The Lord told you to. Yeah. The Lord says, and it could be someone has a problem with a male. <laughs> Like maybe there was a male that abandonment issue or an absent yeah. daddy or whatever. Yeah. Okay, yeah. and so it's sometimes hard for the person that they perceive hurt them right. to minister. Right. So I just heard I had done as much as I could, right. but to have Heather come over and, and do it. So I don't have any ego in this. I can go down and sit down and let Heather do the rest of the service. I don't care. I, it's not about that. It's about you guys getting free. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen.
still. Oh, I know. Your your healing is tied right to the emotional aspect. Okay. <clears throat> when when somebody is hurt as a child, okay, did she do anything to invite that hurt? No, 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 no none no. whatsoever. So then a hurt comes in, and now anger comes in. There can be anger at God. Why do you let it happen? There can be anger at the person. There can be anger at the person who let that person, whatever. So, so now there's this anger. And then you grow up, somebody who's been hurt, the next thing that always happens, they become controlling. Yeah. Because if I can control my, my circumstances, I can keep from getting hurt yeah. more. Yeah. And that's where the Jezebel will come in. Wow. Okay? So there's rejection, violation, Jezebel comes in, so there's anger or whatever. So I'm going to just do after me and we're going to walk through some stuff. Okay, Deb? Okay. So in the name of Jesus, I renounce all hurt, all pain, all anger, the abandonment, the violation, and the Jezebel that has come into my life. I renounce them now in Jesus' name. And Lord, in Jesus' name, I detach death from all those things she renounced. She is willing. She's right now, she's tired of fighting the, the affliction in her body, but it's tied to those demonic spirits. Mm -hmm. So in the name of Jesus, I command every one of those spirits to come out of Deb. The spirit of rejection, the Jezebel, the anger, the spirit of hurt and pain. Uh, even <clears throat> any anger towards you, Lord, we command that spirit to come out. And then, Lord, I just speak total restoration healing over her body right now but every one of those lying spirits right. must come out of death right now every single one of you I just speak peace over her as every one of those demons leave her right now in Jesus' name. Every one of those demons, every one of those lying spirits come out of my sister Deb right now in Jesus' name. They're leaving her right now. They're leaving her right now. Mm -hmm. They have no place. Amen. They're coming up from deep, deep, deep in the soul. And they're leaving you right now, Deb. Right now. They're all in. Lord, I just command the memories of the violation to leave <laughs> Debbie right now. Oh. That the enemy can no longer use those those visions in her head <laughs> to remind her of what happened. <laughs> that she has cut ties with them and she is free of them right now in Jesus' name. Every one of them must come out of her right now. Every one of them must come out of Deb right now. I speak freedom over her mind, freedom over her spirit, man. Freedom over her soul right now in Jesus' mighty name. <sighs> the lion spirit that there's something wrong with Debbie has to come out of her right now. The spirit that said you're unworthy must come out of Debbie right now. The spirit that says you're all alone must come out of Debbie right now. The spirit that a parent violated Debbie must come out of her right now. Debbie is not the sum of the hurts that have been done to her. Debbie is a child of the most high. Debbie is beloved. Debbie is accepted. Debbie is hugged right now by the Father, saying, Debbie, I love you. I love you. And I just speak healing into her body, into her joints, into her muscles. And every demonic spirit, a tiny of those things, I cast them out right now in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. They're leaving right now, Debbie. They're leaving right now. They're, they're like a little puff of choo-choo trains. They're just coming out of you right now. Praise God. They're Praise leaving. God. Praise they're God. leaving. Praise a lifetime God. of hurt and pain is leaving you right now as we're standing here. Oh, hallelujah. You're feeling lighter right now. Hallelujah. 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 That's true. All that baggage, all that yes. weight that's been holding you down your whole life. Is yes. Right now oh, Jesus. freedom, 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 freedom. <laughs> Surana Talana Yana Pusharaba Sandra Pariki Titi Tierra Harra de Tierra Rarara Tali Rondo Rotora Rarara Tlery Shutarra Tarabarro Turabarra Tia Tatarabaku 
Yalia rondo rokora tararaki. Yishandara lalilia rondo rototo. Bring Josh back up. Bring Josh back up. There's a double healing going on right here. Kurana ti 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 riara. He's feeling for his mama right now. There's a healing right now in the family right here. Roka shatara papa. The light spirit that said Josh was rejected by his mommy. We cast it right out of him right now in Jesus' name. Gotta go. Gotta go. Lord, show Josh how much Debbie loves him. Wow. And the spirits have been lying to him. That his mom and dad would would give everything, including their lives, for you, Josh. Healing for this family. And yes. Just, there's nothing wrong with you, Josh. It's just been a lie. The lies Today. of the enemy have twisted your Today. mind and not let you see the truth. Today. About how Glory. Lord, how accepted you are. Today. All those spirits must come out of you, Josh. All those lies. All that anger. All that vile that's been in your spirit has to come out of you right now in Jesus. Yes. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Healing. Healing. Family anointing. It's okay. It's okay, Mary Jo. Hey John, in, in your walk with faith, when I hugged you, what did I tell you? Honestly, I forgot. I said I love you. Yes. Hug your mother and let her know that you love her. Yeah, I, I was just about to do that. Okay. Yes, praise God. See, this is where the enemy comes in and, and tries to just rip a family apart. Um, as long as I've known Bob and Debbie, which is many, 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 many years, they've loved their kids and they've sacrificed for their kids. Things have happened, absolutely. Hurts and pains have been Jesus done name. to everybody. Okay? And the spirit comes in and starts lying. Okay? Jesus name. Jesus name. There's a family curse. A generational curse is trying to come down. Okay? And so we're going to renounce that. Okay? So I want all three of you. The same name of Jesus. Jesus. I renounce. I renounce every, every, every and all, and all family curses, family curses that has tried to come upon, that has tried to come upon this family, this family. And in the power of Jesus, I separate you from every one of those lying spirits. They must come out of you right now. Those curses and, and those, those, those Come on. Those, those, See? Those, Praise God. Coming out. Those mindsets. Right now. There's religious spirits. There's unworthiness spirits. There's violation spirits that have all come in. Yes, and I command them to leave you right now in yes. Jesus' mighty name. Every one of those spirits must yes. come out of the Kirby's right now in Jesus' mighty name. Every one of you Ooh. must come out. Every single one. You must come out. Mm. Every lie of unworthiness. Chief. Shut Every up. lie that you have somehow offended God or offended the family or offended a loved one or, or you've done something that is unforgivable, that spirit must leave you now right now. Lord, I just pour in the love and the acceptance of yes. God into this entire family, yes. including the girls who are not here today, that they would hear this, see this, watch it later, and they would receive yes. total restoration of this family. In Hallelujah. 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 Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Praise God. Now, 
this is not a one-time thing. And I've told you, I've, I've had it. So as things come up in your mind, hey, you know what? I'm still, this thing is still here or that thing is still here. Then come see us and let's let's just kick them out. Let's not carry this, this stuff anymore. Yeah. I don't want any bondage in me whatsoever. Okay? Love you guys. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Deb, your head was hotter than the firecracker. <laughs> Praise God. It was God. like a griddle. I could, I could have cooked a pancake on your forehead. Yes, Amen. Sir. It says we're not done yet with me. <clears throat> so what did I cast out? Confusion. Okay. There's one mother. Stop showing me your affection. When I was five. Okay. And told me I was nothing but a failure. All okay. My life. What does God say about you? I'm not a failure. Okay. And my father is emotionally rejected. Okay. As well, so I Do we know why Dad did that? Because he was frustrated with me, very selfish. No, your dad did that because he was rejected. Your dad didn't even have the ability to love his son. No, he did. And so, if he didn't have the ability, there was nothing that you did was wrong. You did nothing wrong. He just was unable Thank to you. say, "Son, I love you." Oh. So the Lord says, Steve, today I want you to hear me say, I love you. I made you. I knit you together just the way you yes. are. And I love you. And you're perfect in my eyes. But in the name of Jesus, I command every spirit of rejection yep. from mother or yep. father to come out of Steve right me, now. Me. Every one of them come out of him right now in Jesus' name. You have no place. Don't make a show. Just come out. Hallelujah. Just come out of him right now. All those lying spirits of rejection come out of him right now. Every single one. There's, a, there's just a pile of monkeys in that rejection area, Steve. Yeah. And all of them have to come out. And Lord, I speak love and clarity over his mind that he will hear the, the spirit of God say, Steve, I love you. Steve, you're accepted. Steve, you're perfect. Steve, you have a purpose in my kingdom. And so I just speak peace and love over Steve right now in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. 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 I can relate. God. I know exactly how you're Thank doing. Thank you, man. Jesus. Yes, ma'am. Um, I've had a lot of deliverance Bring her back here for a And I just feel like the Lord wants me to come up. It's like kind of like a declaration that I haven't come forward yet. Okay. I see residue. There's still a residue of sadness. Okay? And and sometimes sadness becomes our friend, becomes part of our identity. And so we can get delivered of some of it, but then it's it's like, but I want to keep this little bit. Because you know, you talk to somebody who's had a disease or sickness, I survived cancer. And then every time she talks to somebody who's like survived cancer, it's like it's like if I go around every day and say I was a crack addict, I was a crack addict. I mean, that's who I used to be. I need to, I need to let go of all the yeah. <clears throat> residue of the past. Yeah. So there's a layer. The root is still rejection, some form of rejection, because when a loved one moves to heaven, you you mourn for a period and then it should be over. Mm -hmm. But if it if it lingers. Or you have thoughts at night, that is now a stronghold that's built up you. And that stronghold can't build up in you unless there's still a residue of rejection. Okay? So what I'd like you to do is let's, if we've already hit it, we're going to hit it again. I renounce all forms of rejection. I renounce all sadness. And all familiar spirits that have come in through those two doors. Amen. So, Lord, in the name of Jesus, I yeah. separate my sister from those things she's renounced right now. And I speak to the spirit of rejection. I speak to the spirit, the familiar spirit. And I speak to the spirit of sadness. They all must come out of her right now in Jesus' mighty name. Every one of those spirits must come out. Quit holding on. Come out of her right now. Every one of you, come out. Come out of her right now. She is free. She is not rejected. She is embraced. She is loved. And there's no sorrow in her life. There's no sadness because she is part of the kingdom. She is the bride of Christ. She is loved and she is accepted. And so, Lord, I just...
press in the acceptance into her and we push out all those lies of the enemy. All those demonic spirits must come out of her right now in Jesus' mighty name. Praise God. <clears throat> She is not rejected. She is accepted. All residue of rejection must leave her right now. All lying spirits that say she's alone must leave her right now. All spirits that say she's emotionally alone must leave her right now. And Lord, I declare that she can receive the love of her husband. She can receive the love of her Father in Heaven. She can receive the love of the Spirit. She can receive the love of Jesus right now. Just overwhelm her with your love and acceptance right now in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have nothing to hang on to anymore. Every one of you lying spirits have to come out of her. You have no attachment. She is, she's rejected you. She's cut your lease up. She's destroyed your home. You must leave her right now in Jesus' name. Every one of you. That's them leaving. And, and it's it could be something, and see, I know nothing about you. This could be something that has been with you since you were a little, little, little girl. And so it's a, it's, a, it's a lifetime of residue that's just coming out of you right now. So just let it come out. Let it come out. Just let it keep working on you, okay? And then if anything comes to mind, you need to come back up. Just do it. But right now, it's just coming. They're coming out of you right now, okay? It's all those things that have been said to you. Because you touched on it on Wednesday night, too. So the, the things that have been said over you and um, just the rejection you feel of who you are. Okay, we cut ties. So I was sure yeah, because I cut ties. I was just say, I cut ties with everything, with everything negative, negative that's been spoken over me. And every and all demonic forces that have attached themselves to me by that. And, and all the demonic forces that have attached themselves to me through those evil things that have been said, I renounce those. Okay, Lord, I detach her from those things that she's just renounced. And all the spirits that have attached themselves to her in those areas, we command them to come out of her right now in Jesus' name. To come out of her right now in Jesus' name. And Lord, I speak peace and healing over her mind. Peace over her mind. Peace over her mind. The love of Jesus in her mind. And she just lets go. She lets go. She, oh. she lets go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just let it just let it keep cooking, sister. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. The Lord has a fantastic year for you. You. Yeah, yeah. I'm pointing my big finger at you. <laughs> he has a fantastic year for you. I'm just going to give you a word. You don't need to come up. He has a fantastic year for you. This is the year of you learning your true identity. Amen. And embracing it. And I don't know what he has for you. I don't know if it's going to be in the business world or the ministry world or whatever. But he has something for you. And it's as you let go of these old mindsets and old thinking, hurts from dad, words from dad, as you let go of those, the Lord's just going to fill you up like a cup. And you're just going to be off to the races. Amen. Okay? Wow. <clears throat> Sadness? I'm looking at you in the back row. No, behind you. Sadness? Yeah. Uh, great sadness is come on you. And the enemy's just beating you up with it. So I don't know what it is, something transpired, something has happened to you, whatever the sadness is coming. I don't know if it's a broken relationship, I don't know if it's uh, something to do with mom and dad, but something's come in and now there's just this almost kind of like a blanket of hopelessness has come over you. And the Lord wants to 
deliver you from that. So, if you want to do this right now, I just ask you to renounce all the sadness. I need you to say it. I renounce all sadness and all the things that transpire that allowed sadness in. I renounce those. So in the name of Jesus, I detach my sister from those things that caused the great sadness. And I command every spirit that came in through those doors to come out of her right now in Jesus' name. They're, right, they're already wanting to come out right now. I can see them trying to come up out of your throat and out of your mouth. So every one of those spirits come out of my sister right now. That great sadness, that great disappointment, whatever was spoken, whatever happened to come out of her right now in Jesus' name. And Lord, just fill her with your love and your acceptance right now in Jesus' name. And see your head starting to get hot too. So just let those things manifest, okay? But let that sadness go. Don't hang on to it. If you need to cough and cough or blow it out, do it. Get out of me. Amen? I have a super simple, great message for next Sunday. And it's going to be a simple steps of how God works. And it has to do with the prophetic word I gave on Friday night. Was it Friday night? Friday night. I'm going to expound upon what I said. It's on It's on the message we put up on Facebook. But I was letting Heather do the service. Also, the Lord gave me like five or six mini little visions. And I put them all together. And I'm going to expound upon that this coming Sunday. Okay? Amen. It wants to come out, Rachel. There's a disappointment that's just, it's just like... <laughs> It's like, it's like up in your throat and it's like, it's scared to death that I'm going to tell it to come out. But it won't come out unless you agree with it. Okay. I'm just going to do offers. It's too rich. There's a... The enemy works in the layers. So there's a, a disappointment that you perceive real or not real that comes into a parent. And so then you try to do something to counteract that thing, that disappointment, those words that were spoken over or what you perceive. <clears throat> and then, a, then a, it changes you. Like I was rejected, so I became a worker. And I was going to show, I was going to prove to my parents that I was somebody. So I used to work 300 days, 365 days a year. I'd work every day of the week. I, I mean, I was just working, 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 working. And because I was doing my own flesh, it never amounted anything. And then my dad said, <coughs> I was just money on this coming out right now. <coughs> Praise the Lord. And so they, they built up and we became a person that we were never meant to be because of these things. <coughs> She's beautiful. She's beautiful. She's beautiful. I renounce every negative. Thank you, Jesus. Spoken over me. Thank you, Jesus. Every negative thought that came into my head. Yes. And all the actions that I did to try to undo that. I renounce them now in Jesus' name. Okay. I detach her from those things, that sadness, that disappointment, and those lies that now have become a mantra in your head. It's like the cassette tape is just on a continuous play. Rachel is up, like, like, like you know, whatever the, the, the lie is, whatever the thing is, and, and you start singing the song, and you start believing or whatever. So the Lord wants you to be doing that right now. So in the name of Jesus, I command every one of those spirits that come into Rachel's life, come into her through those open doors. Uh, thoughts and things that were spoken over her and things that she's believed. I command every single one of those spirits to come out of her right now in Jesus' mighty name. She's released you. You have no more authority. You have no more place. She's letting you go. And Lord, I just speak into Rachel. Enjoy. Enjoy the peace of the Lord. And come into Rachel right now. That she would receive your love, your acceptance. Your word that Rachel, you are perfect. There is absolutely nothing wrong with you, daughter. I you where you are. I accept you as you are. And I still have great plans for your life. Yes. So let go of the old and embrace the new, and you'll see it manifest in your life right now. Joy. Joy. Hallelujah. Glory to God. 
All right.